Beloved of God, I want to welcome every one of us again in Jesus' name. This is New Life Baptist Church of Calgary, um, headed by our senior pastor, that is uh, Pastor Mike Lou. Um, I want to say happy resurrection to everyone that is watching and that is listening. It's my prayer that um, as I bring this short word, I know we've had a very long um, musical time. I'm going to bring a short word. I'm going to try to... Um, I've prepared to preach for about one hour to 90 minutes, but I'm going to try and do it. Um, <laughs> I've prepared to preach for about what, 90 minutes, but I'm going to try and do my message within the next... Um, I'm going to use 15% of my time. I'll try to do that as much as um, possible and trust that um, the Lord will bring his word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So brethren, can we bow our heads as we pray? Gracious God, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your word that is here and amen. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the perfect law of liberty. The Bible says in you we live, we move and have our being. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross. I ask that you will speak the words of life unto everyone. You will cause your word to flow with grace, with power, with precision and accuracy. Anoint my lips of clay, Jesus. Use me for your glory. Let your presence flow through me, O oh God. Let life flow through me, O oh God. You will touch everyone watching on Zoom, on Facebook Live. Let no one remain the same. Your presence will invade every home where this message is being heard at this time. And I pray that, our Lord, at the end of this word, all the glory will be unto you. The entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Thank you, mighty Father. Let it be unto us, O God, according to your word. Let there be a performance of your word. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen, and amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, beloved of God, um, today I'll be sharing with us on Be glad he has risen. Be happy he has risen. Can somebody, can you tell, oh, should I say tell your neighbor now? Or tell, just say to yourself, be glad Jesus is risen. Be glad Jesus is risen. Can we all say be glad Jesus is risen? Be glad Jesus is risen. So I want you to be joyful because Jesus is risen. I take my text from the book of Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 28 and then for uh, any, every one of us that is um, connecting Please open your Bible to Matthew chapter 28. I'll, I'll read from verse 1. The Bible says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the fourth day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The Bible says, for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The Bible says, and the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I, I know ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He said, don't be afraid, I know you are looking for Jesus which was crucified and it says he is not here he is risen as he has said come see the place where the lord lay and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you the bible says and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy take note the Bible says they departed from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. That's amazing. When they departed with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. I pray that someone listening, someone hearing, I pray that a word will come to you this week by the reason of the resurrection of Jesus that will bring you joy, that will bring you gladness in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you are expecting from God. But I pray by the power of the essence of life, in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. I pray that a word, the word that will bring you joy, 
that will bring you celebration, that will bring you peace, that will bring you comfort, that will bring you hope, will come for you this week in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's my prayer. That's my word. That's my desire. That a word that will bring you great joy will come for you, will come for your family, will come for your loved one this week in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and as the way to tell the disciples, verse 9, the old Jesus met them, saying, all ill, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then he said unto them, be not afraid, go tell my brothers, and that they go into Galilee, there shall they see me. Amen and amen. I just read Matthew chapter 28 from verses 1 to 10. Now, because of our time, I'm just going to make uh, references to few things and then we wrap up um, this um, service. Beloved of God, when Jesus was crucified, you know, as I was reading and meditating this morning, you know, we usually say after three days. Actually, it's on the third day, not after three days. Jesus came, you know, the resurrection was on the third day, not after three days. It was on the third day, the first day being Friday, the second day being Saturday, and the third day, on the third day, which is Sunday morning, you know, that was the day that Jesus was. So Jesus had been, let's assume that Jesus had been crucified and, um, he had been there for about um, maybe almost 48 hours plus, more than two days, you know, and Mary the Magdalene and the mother of Jesus, they were very sad. They were unhappy. Why? Because Jesus was crucified. I pray that we will not lose our precious and loved ones in Jesus' name. Beloved of God, you know how sad it can be. We all know how sad it can be when you lose your loved ones. I can't imagine how it would have been for the mother of Jesus Christ. I can't imagine how it would have been for the mother of Jesus Christ. When the mother of Jesus Christ saw that Jesus was being crucified. So there was so much sadness. There was so much, I mean, she was overwhelmed, despair. There was so much um, sorrow. She was heartbroken. There was so much agony. I can imagine that. The mother of Jesus, I imagine that the mother of Jesus was grieving. Why? Because Jesus, I mean, was grieving the loss of Jesus Christ. In their heart, it was like Jesus was gone. But beloved of God, it was like the end of the road for Jesus. It was like the hope was gone. You know, imagine we get to positions in life that we find ourselves in positions and we feel, well, that is the end of the road. No more hope. Nothing good can happen again. That was the same thing that happened on the Good Friday. We call it Good Friday, but for those people that day, it was a bad Friday. It wasn't really a Good Friday because it was a Friday that marked their loss. It was a Friday of pain. It was a Friday of desperation. It was a Friday of sadness. And they were sad. I can't imagine how we would have told Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, the mother of Jesus, and the disciples of Jesus, that that Friday, when they saw Jesus crucified, that it was a good day. I can't imagine it was a good day for them. It was really a bad day. But it's okay, today we call it Good Friday, and I'm not disputing that. I'm not trying to change the theology of the world. But what I'm saying is, it was a bad day for them. It was a sad day for them. It was a day of pain. It was a day that they were heartbroken. But one thing stood out that day. Jesus had told them that he was going to rise again. Jesus had told them that he was going to come alive again. Jesus told them, he said, if you pull down this temple, on the third day, it will come up again. Jesus had told them, even though I go, I will come again. Jesus had told them that, well, it's like, this is the end of the world. Jesus had told them that even though it might look like the end of the world, but I will be with you again. Jesus had told them, and even though it might look like they have brought me down. He said, uh, he said when, when, when men say there is a casting down, for you, you will say there is a lifting up. Even though it would have been like I have been buried. But Jesus gave them a promise, a reassurance. He said there will be resurrection. I will rise again. It was like the enemy had had the best of Jesus. It was like the enemy had had the best of the disciples. 
It was like the enemy had had the best of the family of Jesus, his friends, and all the women that took care of Jesus. That was the experience. That was what it seemed like. But on the third day, you know, they went there, the women, thank God for women, thank God for ladies. You know how sometimes women have so much pressure, zeal, everything. They ran there early on the first day of the work, week, very early in the morning. Permit me to say this. The Bible says, at the end of the Sabbath day, as the morning began to dawn, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. I imagine they didn't take breakfast that day. I imagine they didn't even make breakfast for their family members. Why? Because their heart was with Jesus. Why? Because they were really concerned about the fact that Jesus had been buried, had been crucified. I imagine maybe they didn't even take their bath or wash up their face, but they were just, their mind was just at the tomb. Why? Because they were expectant. They were eagerly waiting for the resurrection. And God blessed these women. Even though the disciples were home, I don't know what the disciples were, were doing at home. Because they knew Jesus told the disciples, all of them, that he was going to resurrect on the third day. But I don't know what the disciples were doing at home. But the Bible says, very early, before everything started, it shows how zealous and how passionate these women were. It shows how concerned, how loving. It shows the depth of their heart, that their mind was with Jesus. It shows that they, were, they held on to the word of God and they believed this word that it was going to come alive. Beloved of God, how many of us today do we believe God's word? These women, I can say, they were watching over the word of God for it to come to fulfillment. Mm. So it was like the first thing they did very early in the morning as the day began to break. They ran to the tomb. They ran to the sepulchre to check their Lord, to check the master, to check the savior. Some people can feel, well, maybe they're going to check it out whether Jesus did rise truly. No, it wasn't about that. They had an expectation of resurrection. They had an expectation that he will come alive again. They had a hope of resurrection. And that's why I'm saying to us this morning, be glad Jesus is alive. I like the word that the one of in one other translation, I think in John or the Lucan account, you know, the, the angel said to them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. That was the joy of salvation. That was the hope they were expecting. That was that was the gladness. Be glad. He is alive. He is risen. Death could not conquer Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He went down into the grave and he took the key of death. And that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians. Let's quickly see that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited this morning. 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. From verse 54. Or maybe I asked um, uh, my wife to read from verse 54. Miss Ade, please can you read for us? I mean, Mrs. Ade, can you read for us from verse 54? 1 Corinthians 15, 54. Let's hear. Yes, read for us. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption. Yeah. And this model has put on immortality. immortality. Yeah. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Yes. Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. That is it. Death is swallowed up in victory. That was what Jesus did mm. on the two days of isolation. On the two days or three days, he was in hell. When people were saying, well, Jesus is gone, he's dead. The Bible says, death was swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. He's alive. Be glad he's alive. I say to everyone watching, listening, be glad. The entire family of New Life Baptist Church and everyone watching live on Facebook and that will yet to watch after now, be glad Jesus is alive. Be why? Death is swallowed up in victory. You know, he, he didn't just swallow up death, he swallowed up death in victory. You know what happened? 
death that was conquering the entirety of humanity, beginning from Adam. Death overcame Adam, but someone came that was greater than death. That's why the Bible says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11 verse 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. In John chapter 14, he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, he says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. That's why the angel said, don't look for him here. He is not here. Why seek him in living among the dead? He is not here. He is alive as he has told you. He is risen. So I bring the word of hope, word of joy, word of gladness to someone watching, to someone listening. Be glad Jesus is alive. Amen. I said, be glad Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Let's look. I mean, can you read up that place for us? First Corinthians 15. Can you read verse 55 to the end? And then I, I, I go back to Matthew 28. Yes, ma'am. Oh, death, where is your sting? Death, no more sting. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, AIDS, where is your victory? No more victory. No more. You know what? For the sting of death and the victory of death, everything was defeated totally. Amen. The sting of death and the victory of death was taken away totally. Yes, continue reading, ma'am. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Uh, the strength of sin is the law. But both the sin and the law, the Bible says, Jesus, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, he was born that he might save, save his people from their sins. That's why the Bible says he's appointed unto man to die once and after death, judgment. But Jesus brought life. That's why Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Amen. That is the gift of God, eternal life through Jesus. Be glad he is risen. Be glad he is alive. Be glad there is hope for you. Can I say to someone, death cannot get the best of you. Death is not your hand. Because after death, we're going to join our Father in heaven. We're going to be with Jesus. His life has given us life. Amen. That's why the Bible says the first Adam was a living being. But the second Adam was a life-giving spirit. Jesus has given us both life here on earth and life in heaven. You know, the eternal life is giving us life at both ends. Not just air on that alone. Just one minute quickly, my, my battery is about to run out. Can you just connect this for me? You know, you know. So, he has given us life, both air and the, 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 the life after. So, beloved of God, rejoice. Rejoice. Even if we die in this world, it's not the end of the world for us. Mm. Because we will rise up and reign with him. Yeah. And that's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Can we read first? We're going to go back to this Corinthians. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Yes, can you read for us? Then we who are alive and remain yes. shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Yes. To meet the Lord in the air. Can you read from verse 13 when it talks about from... Yeah, verse but, 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Don't be ignorant, brethren. Yes. Concerning those who are falling asleep. Concerning those who are falling asleep. Why? Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. That's why we must not sorrow as others who are hopeless. Beloved, there are other people that after this world, immediately they die. After this world, there are people... That after this world, immediately they die. That's the end. That's the end of everything for them. But what? Continue reading. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. He said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, what will happen? Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Amen. Anyone who sleeps in Jesus will come alive again. That's what the Bible says to us. And go back to the Corinthians. Corinthians. And read up for us, man. 
But thanks be to verse 57. Verse 57, that's the joy. That's the But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory? Through through our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody watching, somebody listening. You have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So when, when Mary Magdalene and the other Mary got to the sepulchre, on that day, they, early in the morning, there was no time for breakfast. There was no time to negotiate with everyone. Why? Because their mind was there. They ran quickly to the tomb. And when they got there, they were looking for the master. The Bible says there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone Hallelujah. and from the door and sat upon it. I pray for someone watching, someone listening. Whatever represents stone on the way of your destiny, I pray that by the power of resurrection, they will be rolled back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Brother Daniel, for that saying amen. I pray that for everyone, I mean, I might not hear you, but please, I want you to say amen. Whatever stone, whatever represents a stone, a barrier, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your experience now. But there could be a barrier on your way. There could be something limiting you. I pray that by the power of resurrection, ah, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that there will be a supernatural intervention that will cause every stone to be rolled back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The stone will be rolled back. The stone that is blocking your em employment, your career, your destiny, your papers, your documentation, your joy, your peace, your marriage, your prosperity. Any stone blocking your health, any stone blocking your hope, any stone blocking your way. I pray that it will be rolled back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says the angel of the Lord descended and rolled back the stone. Yes. Why? Why did the angel roll back the stone? The Bible says his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. We all have snow outside now. You know how, how white this, you know, he came with all sense of purity, holiness, glory, Hallelujah. splendor. Hallelujah. Verse 4, it says, and for fear of him, the people who were prevented, who were by the tomb, they all, they were as dead men. But let me go quickly to where I want us to read again. The Bible says, Verse 8, and I'm going to stop here because I don't want to, I, I, I mean, I don't want to shoot my time. In verse 8, the Bible says, Bible says in verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He was crucified, but is alive. He said, I, 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 I just picture what the angel was saying. He said, you are looking for the Jesus that was crucified. What you knew last about Jesus was crucifixion. But what you will know now about Jesus is resurrection. The last thing you heard of Jesus was his crucifixion. But the next news you are going to hear now is the news of his resurrection. Beloved of God, I don't know the last news people heard about your family. I don't know the last news people do. Well, the last news we heard about him was that he was, he was still struggling. But the next news they will hear after this resurrection will be news that God has settled you. Amen. That things are working for you. Amen. That your joy is full. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I feel the power and the presence of God as I'm sharing with us. I, 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 know, I, know, I know it's it's not a usual service. But as I'm sharing, if you want to be praying in your spirit, man, can you be praying? If you feel like praying now, can you begin to claim anything that you want to tie to this resurrection celebration? I feel the power and the presence of God touching everyone, wherever you are watching, in your life, in your home, in your body. I feel the power of resurrection touching you. I feel the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what has been dead in your life. There is life for you. There is hope for you. There's going to be resurrection. I know the last news they had about you was that you lost something. But the next news is that you have gained multiple. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, hey that would be your experience. The last news they had about you is that things were hard for you. But the next news, oh, hallelujah. 
I feel joy in my spirit, man. I feel the presence and the glory of God. I don't know the last news your friends, your colleagues, your family members heard about you. The last news about Jesus was that he was crucified. But the next news, oh Jesus, was that he's alive. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know the last news, but there is a new news. There is the next news. There is a new news. There is the next news. There is a new news. There is the next news. I know the last news they had about you, somebody watching, somebody listening, is that you are sick in your body. Is that you are weak in your body. But hear the word of the Lord. I stand as a, a servant of the Most High God. The God that performed the counsel of his messenger. And that confirmed the word of his servant. I decree. The next news that will be had concerning you. Is that you are healed. Is that you are healthy. Is that you are stronger. Is that there is hope for you. Is that you are alive. Is that you are better. Is that you are brighter. Is that you are better. In the name of Jesus Christ. So beloved, I, I, I am feeling God's presence. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your experience. I don't know the last news. I wish you can just write it down. I don't know what the last news is. But there is a new news. There is a next news. I don't know what the last news is. I don't know the last news you had from your family members, from your friends. I don't know the last SMS you received. I don't know the last WhatsApp message you read. I don't know the last email you got. I don't know the last me the last phone call you got. But the next one that you will get, the next one that you will get, in the name that is above every other name, we bring you joy. Amen. We bring you peace. Amen. We bring you hope. Amen. We bring you celebration. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I know the last news you told your family members is that, well, uh, things are difficult at this time. But I'm speaking to someone watching, someone listening. The next news you will share with them is that God has settled you. Is that your joy has begun. Is that lines are now falling for you in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus Christ. How do I know? I have to round, I have to round up here now because time is gone. And I know, and I know, I, 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 there's a lot here. But look at verse 8. The Bible says they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. The fear that is not a negative fear. It's not an overwhelming fear. They departed with fear. They were trembling. Wow. You know, I mean, when someone is standing in awe, wow. The Bible says they left with awe and great joy. He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. And that's why I say to you, be glad. That's why I say to you, rejoice, he's alive. Brother Daniel, rejoice, he's alive. Dimeji and Ayo, rejoice, he's alive. The entire uh, San Lu family, I see Manny, I see Lexi, I see um, Mark, I see uh, Mamaribi, I see uh, Kuyasam, rejoice, he's alive. I see Bim, rejoice, he's alive. Sister Modupe, rejoice, he's alive. Uncle Bob and his entire family rejoice is alive. Rike Re rejoice is alive. Pelumi Moi uh, Bisola Tomiwa rejoice is alive. Pastor Mike rejoice is alive. Sister Diola and uh, David and Daniel rejoice is alive. And I say to myself, be glad he's alive. Why? Because Jesus is alive, there is hope of life for you. There is res hope of resurrection for you. Can you read? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 First Corinthians, yeah, it should be 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Oh, thank you Jesus That should be 1 Corinthians 5 21 1 Corinthians or 2nd, is it 2nd Corinthians 5 21 2nd, it should be 2nd Corinthians, sorry 5 21, hallelujah Rejoice is alive. For yes. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for Wait. us. Wait, I want to read here Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, He made him who knew no sin. That's the exchange. <laughs> That's the great exchange. The one who knew no sin, he made him what, man? He made him to be sin for us. He made him to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in, in him. Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 
He made him who knew no sin to become sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, finally, beloved of God, they ran and they went to tell his disciples that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is risen, that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is risen. The Bible says, if only in this world we have hope. We are of all men, the most, what? The most miserable. The most miserable. Thank you, sir. If only in this world is our hope. That's why I encourage every one of us. Everything about this world, thank God for the things in this world. Everything we hand. Look at how cor uh, coronavirus has suspended everything in the world. Those who have very nice cars, they can't drive their cars again. Those who want... Some, somebody was telling me that um, he, she has bought very nice wares for 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 summer. East, for summer and everything. Which she's oh, I've planned this. Look at that. But if only in this world is our hope, we are of all men the most miserable. Mm -hmm. But there is hope of eternal life, mm -hmm. and that's why I end with this because of someone that might watch this later. If you are yet to give your life to Jesus Christ, there is hope of eternal life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, except a man be born again. John chapter 3, verse 3. He cannot see the kingdom of God. But if you give your life to Jesus, if you live a glorious and a faithful life, there is hope of eternal life for you. Even though you die in this world, it won't be the end of your life. Mm. Even though everything here ends in this world, there is hope of resurrection. Mm. Because he's alive, I will live mm. forever. Mm. Because Jesus is alive. He said, one day you will come. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, you may be there also. Beloved of God, there is hope for resurrection. Father, we thank you. thank you. Can I say this one more time before I pray? Before I pray, I feel like saying this one more time. I don't know the last news people said concerning you. I don't know the last report that you heard. But I have a conviction. The next news... Oh, Jesus. The next news will be good news. Amen. Even though the last news had been bad news, but the next news will be good news. Amen. It's like you are looking for Jesus that was crucified. The, 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 the chapter of crucifixion has ended finally. And I'm saying to somebody, the chapter of sorrow and loss and pain in your life, in your home, in your family ends permanently from today in the name of jesus christ Amen. that chapter of struggle that chapter of affliction that chapter of pain that chapter of depression that chapter of sorrow oh jesus that chapter of of pain of heartbrokenness of sickness hence in the name of jesus christ Amen. as we celebrate the resurrection it's a new dawn for you it's a new hope for you the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night. Hey, joy comes in the morning. Your morning of joy, the new dawn of joy comes for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As we conclude this Easter celebration, lines will begin to fall for you in pleasant places in the name of Jesus Christ. The doors you knocked before that refused to open. When you knock those doors after now, the doors will open to you of their own accord in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. The things you tried to do before this resurrection and you could not achieve, you will go back after now. You will do those things with ease and there will be a performance. You will achieve them in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I declare and declare, so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you wave your hands and thank God? Can you thank God there's a performance? Can you wave your hands and rejoice? Can somebody, you? we want to see you. Palumi, we want to see you. Can you wave your hands and rejoice? Can you celebrate? Can you bless the Lord? We worship you, Jesus. Thank you for resurrection. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Be glad. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you for the word. Yes. Thank you for speaking to your, your people. Mm -hmm. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to everyone, even those that will yet watch this video. I pray, Lord, that um, the hope of resurrection, the life in Christ Jesus, 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. The hope of resurrection, the joy of resurrection will be getting to illuminate the lives, the home, the heart, the spirit of everyone in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. The season of sadness is over in your life in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. By the next Easter celebration, next year about this time, the angel said, about this time, according to the time of life, he said, I will return. Hey, by the next Easter celebration in the year 2021, I decree the things that are your prayer points now would have come to major testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The things you are asking God for now would have been a done deal in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your status will change. Your story will change. Amen. Your testimony will be full. Amen. Your joy will be full. The world will celebrate with you. Your family members will celebrate with you. Even your adversaries will rejoice with you. Because things will work for you. Thank you, mighty Father. And finally, for anyone who is yet to accept Jesus, I pray that the hope of resurrection will bring salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, most high God. In Jesus' blessed, most holy, mighty, never failing, and powerful name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody read.